Okay, before I start this video, what I learned during the making of this video applies to any modern car with anti-lock brakes or ABS. That includes both EVs and petrol and diesel cars. In this case, the ABS fault was on my wife's 2018 Renault Zoe Electric, but it's the same principle. Hello and welcome to another episode. Uh, this one's about my wife's Renault Zoe. Um, it's six years old and it's only done about 11,000 miles. And the other day I'm driving onto the drive and suddenly I get this warning about check hill start and ABS and braking system. Now I've checked my fluid levels and I've checked the brake pedal. The servo assist is working fine so the power assisted brakes are working. I've taken out and test driven it and it all seems good apart from that damn warning light. So I'll just show you what I'm getting on the car and what I'm intending to do about it to fix it. Right, so I'm just going to turn the car on, which involves pressing the foot brake. And you see you've already got one. See, electronic stability control warning, uh, which is that orange light. And the orange spanners come on. And the ABS warning lights come on. And in a second you'll see it flash up, saying, uh, check hill start assist. I can confirm that the hill start assist is not working. Um, I've Googled this and the first thing they say is check your 12 volt battery. Now I've got one booked for tomorrow with Halfords. Uh, so hopefully that will sort it out. Also some have said um, when this happens, you lose the ability to regenerate brake, regen braking. Um, this is still doing it. So I don't know. Um, other sort of Googled articles have said it could be the a, a brake switch in the foot brake, but if I press the foot brake, obviously it's working and you heard the motor go there. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the foot brake. Also, you won't be able to start the car. So fingers crossed the 12 volt battery fixes this. We last changed the 12 volt battery in 2021 when it was just over three years old. It was only a few days out of warranty. Um, Otherwise, we could have got one for nothing. But Renault's recommendation is to change it every three years. I mean, the one we had in has got a four-year warranty, and it would be four years old next April or May. So I think it's highly likely it is that. Hoping it's not anything more expensive. I have got an OBD adapter, but it doesn't seem to want to work with the Renault Zoe and the Kanzi app. My old Conway app used to work with it but that's packed up so I can't see what the the DTC codes are so uh, we will see what happens tomorrow and this is just for others who get this error just my journey on how we fix it hopefully right we had the battery change yesterday by Halfords they came out and did it for us I could have done it myself and just ordered one but I just let them happen my wife's happy to let them do it pay the 25 quid and that didn't clear the error. I then had another go at getting my OBD reader working with Car Scanner. Um, I can't get it working with Kanzi still because it still wants to work with the Conway. My Conway's packed up. So I've used my blue uh, OBD adapter. I can't remember the name of. And I managed to get it working with um, Zoe Phase 2 as a profile as the car. And it reads all the codes then. And I managed to reset loads of old codes that were sitting around for when the, the previous 12 watt battery failed because it gets very unstable. And I had a go at resetting this ABS one. And you see it, it flashes, makes the light flash, and then it dings and comes straight back on. So it's, it's a permanent error. And I can see that the ABS sensor, the speed sensor for the left wheel, is the issue in, in the OBD message, the DTC code. And they're about 20 quid but my local Hevra wants 300 quid to change it. So I'm going to do some more investigation because you can clean out the sensors. Uh, they get muck in them over time in both the wheel side and in the sensor side. And if I clean that and it doesn't go away, then I'm just going to order one from somewhere reliable and do it myself. Let's see anyway. So the Jacob's got your wheels everywhere you can. Got a scotch there and the back and front. I'm on slight slant, but immediately as soon as I jack up, I can see the wire for the bloody motion center has, has, 
has come out of its hole. So that's probably got pulled out or something. So that's what's wrong with this. It may have got uh, rubbed against the tire, so it's jumped out. And there it is. Somehow that's popped out of some holder somewhere and that is the wheel sensor and it's uh, the tires rubbed against that and it's broken the cable so it needs a new cable um, it's now Friday um, a few things have happened during the week to do with uh, this fault um, it turns out that the speed sensor cable was not put back right I suspect when we had the shock absorbers changed, the rear shock absorbers changed in May um, at a local Hever garage. Now, I've taken this up with them, and as an act of good will, they've offered to pay for the speed sensor cable. Now, I'd already ordered one from Cleveley Auto, and that has now arrived. Uh, this is the new cable I had from Cleveley, uh, which was um, 30 something pounds, including the VAT. Now, they're a trusted supplier and they know their stuff so yeah it's not a Renault cable which is 90 pounds plus and that's what made up most of the cost of my quote for having it changed so I was enraged and that made me basically manage to get the wheel off and see what had happened but would they have owned up to this if we paid the 300 quid I just don't know now it's a bit obvious to me that they were the last ones to, to be in there and could have stretched the suspension down and it may have snagged this the old cable and left a bit of slack hanging near the tyre. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's happened because in the six years this Zoe's been around, nothing like that has happened. And funnily enough, the other side is fine. So um, I'm going to put this back on. I've got the car jacked up with the wheel off. And I'm going to plug it in and hopefully I won't have to use the OBD reader and my V-Peak, which is the one I've, I've managed to get working with car scanner. So this trim comes off from there. It's Torx T5 drive, drivers to get that undone. And then there's a 10 millimetre bolt to undo the other end, which is at the back of there. So behind this, you can see the other end of the connector is there. Right, the other end of the connector is there. I think you can see that. there that's where the one end goes and then the other end goes and you can't see where that goes that's the bolt that holds it that's the hole works by magnetism it's a bit like an electric guitar pickup right um i've replaced the cable i've made sure it's stuck in correctly and it's rooted correctly and i put all the studs back where they should be and it's clipped in and it's going nowhere near the tire this time so i'm going to turn the car on this is the first time and see if the fault has gone hopefully it will without me having to mess with the obd and clear dtc codes right i'm going to turn it on now See if it's gone. It's gone. No messing. So uh, that's it. I can put the wheel back on and I'll check the other side to see if that's really okay. And jobs are good and it would seem. And the routing I've done. Um, I've put it through that brake line thing there so that can't move I think mean, that rubber is there so it can rest on that and it can happily rub 
and then that double rubber there is to stop it rubbing on the body as that goes up. So, and then that connector is in there and that's not going to move and so cannot touch the tyre and cause another error. Um, with the wheel arch trim back on, it's just this bit down the bottom that allows you to get it off and there's the press stud there that just pulls out and pushes back in and then uh, the cables hidden behind there and the connectors at the top there. Just when I thought I was clear and I cleared the diagnostic code, I put the wheels back on and I was tightening the nuts and the locking wheel nut broke. So I had to figure out how to get the wheel hub off and the drum. Um, in the Renault, it's different from all the cars I'd worked on in that you've got to take the main wheel bearing nut off the hub. It's an all in one thing, but the advantage is the the broken off bit of bolt was sticking out the other end and that was enough to turn initially by finger tightening and then I got the mole grips on it and I managed to get it out. But I needed to buy a 36 millimeter half inch drive socket to do that. So that cost another £13.47. So what did I learn from my experience? It would seem I need to double check the work the garage does every time it goes in for work, which I should not have to do, especially as this was a highly rated Hevra garage. Firstly, they had over tightened the, the rear wheel nuts when we had the shock absorbers changed in May. Secondly, they should have double checked the speed sensor cable was clipped in and routed correctly when they put the wheels back on. Basic mechanics. Despite them compensating us for the damaged speed sensor cable, I'm very reluctant to take our car back to them again. So what did this repair cost us? If I'd ignored the internet and not changed the 12 volt battery, then it simply would have been £34.20, which is a nice cheap repair. If I'd had a work in diagnostics when we first got the error and car scanner was working, it would have been evident from the archive diagnostics codes what happens when the 12 volt is too unstable to run the car, as you can see on screen. Basically every sensor throws an error that's in the car. And also on the Renault, it records the odometer reading of each DTC in, in, and they were all archived. So I could easily tell what was going on last time the 12 volt battery uh, went belly up. So the main thing I've learned from this is to have work in diagnostics. It would have saved me some money and hassle. Overall, um, 12 volt battery, £121.59. Clearly spare parts, 34.20 for the speed sensor cable. 36 millimeter socket was £13.47. That's a total of 169.26. The Hevra garage quote was 298.39 just to change the bloody cable. Although they include a, pr a price that includes every single possible diagnostic because they say it's not always simple, but they should give me a range of costs. The simple one, the best case and the worst case. They didn't do that. So we saved £129.13 versus the garage, but we could have just spent £34.20. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you for watching.